It's time to get grounded. A lot of us go barefoot in the summer, and this morning we're going to talk about the benefits of working out without our shoes. All-American sprinter Stephen Sashin is stepping in now to bust the myth about barefoot, walking, running, and performance. Steve, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Good to be here. All right. So, you know, I love to go barefoot at home. I don't know so much on certain workouts, but what is the key to getting a better workout when you go barefoot? Well, let's start by thinking about babies because they spend a lot of time barefoot. When your kids were learning how to walk, would you think about doing something that squeezed their toes together or made it so they couldn't feel the ground so their brain didn't know what was happening or how to balance or having something stiff that didn't let their feet bend and move and flex? I'm guessing no. no. Am I correct? Right. You're right. <laughs> yeah. So same thing for adults. And of course, most athletic shoes do all those things. I mean, if you look at your foot, it's probably not this shape, is it? Right. No, definitely not. <laughs> so, and again, elevates your heel. That messes with your posture. Super stiff. Doesn't let you feel anything. So the biggest benefit for barefoot is letting your feet do what's natural. Feet are your foundation. They're supposed to bend and flex and move. And if you don't let them do their job, other joints try to, like your ankle, your knee, your hip, and your back, and they're not designed for that. So that can cause a bunch of pain. Also, your feet are supposed to feel. You have a quarter, or sorry, you have 200,000 nerve endings in every in every sole, preferably one or two. Right. That tells your brain how to control the rest of your body enjoyably and efficiently. If you look at power lifters, they'll often deadlift either bare feet or in socks or in super flat shoes because they know that's how you get the most power out of the ground. Same thing like if you do push-ups, would you do this with your fingers or this with your fingers? Oh, I spread them, just get more grip, right? Exactly. Same thing with your feet. So with you want a shoe, if you're not going to go barefoot, because not everyone wants to, sometimes you want a little protection, something a little more stylish. You want a shoe like Zero Shoes that gives you a nice wide toe box, mm -hmm. low to the ground for balance and agility, super flexible, super lightweight. Oh, man. So lightweight. We've had people... Yeah, I know. We've had people tell us they uh, went to bed still wearing their zero shoes because they forgot they were wearing them. <laughs> and you could just roll them up for, you know, if you're traveling with those shoes, they look like they'll they'll only take up a little bit of space in your uh, overnight bag. Um, so that's great. Exactly. You mentioned some of the benefits of being barefoot or wearing that minimal shoe. It kind of goes against what most people think about when they think about working out. But I think you made some great points. Who can really benefit from a barefoot workout or a minimal shoe? Well, we have customers who, from age 5 to 95, who use our shoes for everything from taking a walk, strolling on the beach, to running 100-mile ultramarathons and climbing mountains. So pretty much everyone. I mean, my answer really is if you have feet, you could benefit from using them because it's really a case of use it or lose it. And losing, losing that strength, that agility, that mobility, that balance can have really horrible repercussions as you get older, especially elderly people, very common that they lose their balance, have falls, break their hip, and what can happen from that. So everyone can benefit from doing what's natural. I understand you may have an Olympic connection with what's going on in Tokyo right now in your shoes. We're happily the footwear provider for two Olympic teams currently, Olympic Artistic Swimming, there they are, and also Archery. So while the swimmers don't actually wear our shoes when they're in the pool, they wear our shoes and sandals when they're going to and from the pool and hopefully when they're on the podium. And are there any myths you can bust about being barefoot and working out? Oh man, lots. Well, the biggest myth is that it's illegal to be barefoot in many places. And in most places, that is far from the truth. Like it's not illegal to be barefoot in any store. They may have a policy and you want to abide by that, but it's not illegal. Or many people think that it's illegal to drive barefoot, not illegal in any of the 50 states. Oh, very interesting, very interesting. And I'm sure there's a little bit of technology that goes into these shoes. Well, the technology, if you think about it, um, for the first 9,950 years that human beings have been wearing footwear that we know of, it all looked like ours, really. Low to the ground, like I said, for balance and agility. We don't elevate your heel because that messes with your posture. Um, we don't have toe spring that messes mm -hmm. with your gait. Like I said, lightweight and flexible. And the sole is designed to give you the right amount of protection and traction, but also give you that ground feel so your brain knows what your feet are doing, so it knows how to efficiently and enjoyably control the rest of your body. Sounds like it's just going back to the basics. Thank you, Steve. If you want more on their workout sand sneakers, visit zeroshoes.com.